Hello, everyone. My name is Shav Tiela Williams. It's long. I go by Shav for short, just so no one, please call me Shav. <laughs> I'm a Philly based illustrator, and I got my BFA in illustration from the University of the Arts back in 2021. Today, I just want to walk through some of my work and what inspires it. I think you can learn a lot about an artist by looking at the art they like to look at. I'm really into comics, animation, film. I read a lot of graphic novels and collect them. I like horror, comedy, slice of life, manga, and overall like very character heavy uh, stories that have cute artwork, but also feature kind of heavier themes and more adult topics. Um, I watch a lot of animation too. What I have up here, I feel like is work that I've consumed over the years that influences my art, my illustration stylistically, especially Rebecca Sugar and like the cartoons that she makes. I love her kind of like round character art. So my work after all that influence kind of ends up looking very poppy, colorful, mostly narrative driven, and it features interesting characters and a general sense of whimsy. I utilize a lot of black, like blocks of black and a strong line in my work. But I like to keep things light and fun. So I enjoy using bright colors, brown shapes. And again, I can see my work. I can see myself making work for children. I think my style lends itself well to that. But again, I don't know, I'm an adult. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so it can get a little bit dark. That's just realistic. <laughs> And I think it makes for a fun juxtaposition. Like this is an example. It's an autobiographical comic I made in college about some feelings of burnout I was having at the time. I just enjoy making work about my personal experiences and those of my family, friends, pets even. This is an excerpt from a comic I did called A Day in the Life of Gigi. This is Gigi. <laughs> my boyfriend's bulldog. Um, yeah, this is just like a cute little light comic about the things she likes to chew on before a nap. Uh, I like to keep it light. This is not very light. This is a watercolor painting inspired by a heartbroken friend. Uh, she had just gone through a breakup and I found myself really fascinated by like the intensity of what she was feeling. And I think in hindsight, when you get through like tough bits, there is humor looking back in emotional turmoil. Like, and this is more art about being sad. It's just animated this time. Um, but yeah, I kind of started experimenting with adding animated elements to my illustrations just to give them visual flair back in 2021. And I honestly really like it. More so hand-drawn techniques rather than like After Effects. This is a, the full background I did for a parallax animation. I make work about my hobbies, so I roller skate. Really good exercise. Um, but yeah, we don't have time to watch it, so I just put the full thing up there because I like looking at it like that. But there's a really cool effect I put in place. I also sew. Um, I've taught myself a lot about it over like the 10 years that I've been doing it. This is just some pictures of stuff that I've made. And as I've grown as an artist, more and more, I just want to incorporate this like merge this with my creative practice as an illustrator, maybe step a little bit more into the fine art space with it. Uh, but that was a journey, like finding out what that looks like for me. So that at first it was just creating illustrations for fashion brands that I like. This is for Lazy Oaf. It was self-directed. I wish they would hire me though, dream client. <laughs> uh, but they make really poppy, like graphic, um, like they use graphic art in their designs. And this was for the brand Sugar Thrills, self-directed again. Um, but yeah, I just like to have fun with my illustrations and just trickling in that little bit of fashion influence. Um, I got really creative with um, trying to merge my two passions. This is an illustration I made and turned into a pop-up book about the clothes in my closet and like the sentimental value they have towards like for me, whether that's something I made something I thrifted or like a piece that was handed down to me by a family member. Like, and I also st started working with surface working in surface pattern design towards the end of my college career. 
when I was thinking about what market I was stepping into, because I was, I was again taught and trained as an illustrator. So it was very much about like, what are you going to do as your business? How are you going to make money while still having fun? Um, but yeah, this was a pattern I made about a hand injury I had that was really making me anxious. Um, I had to keep it cute though. I got it printed on socks and was able to sell it at my school store, which was a very fun experience. And it was very satisfying too, to see my work printed and be able to sell it. Uh, so I really wanna lean into like merchandising and or making merchandise and product licensing in the future. So I really like surface design, like I stuck with it. It was a big part of my thesis. And I was able to, again, kind of bring in a little bit of fashion into it. Like I got a print on fabric, made a dress. Um, yeah, so as a surface designer so far, I've only got my work printed on fabric. Um, but going forward, I really want to experiment with creating more cohesive sets, um, like a catalog of work for licensing. Uh, and I don't know, like there's a lot of potential for, for experimentation and it's a fun new way to incorporate textiles and sewing. I really wanna take a chance. Yeah, it just really excites me. I wanna experiment with printmaking, dyeing fabrics. Like there's just so much, so many, so much possibility like in the future with this. So yeah, I'm excited to experiment. Thank you so much. Listen to my presentation. Thank you for the one Thank you. This show is in memory and in collaboration with the Dina Wynn Foundation, which is very close to my heart because before Dina was uh, diagnosed with cancer, we had been talking about exhibiting our work. Juliet, our development director, came up with this idea of how do we sort of embrace, you know, some artists that are underseen and underrecognized. And so we're really trying to figure out how we could be more dynamic, more accessible, more meaningful, and how we could actually honor Dina. And we really thought by creating this fellowship, it would be a nice way of supporting artists that need a little more support, a little more help. And also one of the things, one of the reasons why I started in Liquid was having gone to art school in New York and not having mentors or supporters here. When I moved back to Philadelphia, I was a fish out of water. No one knew who I was. I had family, friends, friends from high school, but no support system. And after you graduate school, you have no place to show your work. We need to support our artists in a better way. So I want to welcome all of you to being part of our community, you know, and take advantage of it and reach out to us if you need or help. We know a lot of people in the city. We can't promise anything, but we'll do our best job to be good, you know, nurturers. Um, and I want to introduce my friend and my co-conspirator, John Wind. Hello, thanks, Rachel. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Sarah, Juliet, Rachel, Claire, the whole in Liquid team. Th this is really a gratifying uh, experience because we uh, we get to make a difference, touch a bunch of uh, artists' lives, and uh, and offer something that just wasn't there before for all the reasons that Rachel mentioned. And the, the connection with my mom, uh, she started as a serious artist uh, kind of late. She had uh, a family and as my brother and I were in high school and you know moving out of the house, that's when she really leaned into her art making. And she was kind of a maverick. She learned how to weld. She could have welded bridges. Like she got a, you know, a, a diploma in bridge weld, in welding, serious industrial welding, but she chose to uh, apply it to art. Um, and she always uh, identified with, with young artists and with women and with kind of the underdog and just you know, focused on making the work and, and the quality of the work. So she would have loved this program and the opportunities and you know, connecting with a, a new generation of young artists. This year, the fact that it's, you know, it's mostly female artists, um, that, that's, you know, that would have been close to her heart as well. So congratulations to all of you. And I can't wait to hear what you have to say. And thanks in Liquid for the opportunity. <laughs>